Hello and welcome. I am Matthew Ventures and this is CS146. Today we're talking about one-page game designs. Um, we had a lot of submissions uh, last year from a number of different students. Uh, some of them were great, some of them needed a lot of improvement, so this year we're just going to be reviewing some of the work from last year and hopefully gaining insights into what worked and what didn't. Uh, so here's the first one we have up. Um, and this mood board or excuse me, this one page game design just has a little bit too much going on. It's very hard to sort of have a, a flow for the eye of where to start and where to end. Uh, traditionally, uh, people are going to start in the top left and try to find their way to the bottom right. People read left to right. Um, and I see we have sort of a, a one here, right? The number one is written in a circle, but it's also written over here, which is kind of confusing. Um, the arrows point in both directions, which is a little frustrating because it's just a little bit too much and it's hard to see where I'm supposed to go. Like I get this picture that there's new features, there's a design layout and gameplay. Okay, so maybe this section is the gameplay section, but if this is its own section, it should be boxed. It shouldn't have an arrow to say that this is the gameplay. Um, and I can get the idea that there's some sort of floating house and it's moving in different directions. And then the blimp is the enemy maybe? New enemy, right? Um, so we got a blimp pointing to the house, pointing to the uh, front with a green arrow to the blimp. The color of the green versus the pink arrows, like it's unclear what, what this is encoding. Um, and just the art style of having this sort of hand drawn, which is fine, um, really doesn't work well with also having these rendered images from the game itself. There's just a little bit too much going on here. And I think when we're evaluating mood boards, um, I don't know if I have the, uh, the grading schema up, but there's like three metrics which we're looking at. And I remember one of them was efficiency, which is that it's like how much can you get out of a small amount of content, you know? Um, and I think that this just has a little bit too much going on. Let's see if I can find that page. Report. All right, I can't find it, um, but let's keep going. So this one, Drift Away, uh, this one is a lot cleaner. There's a lot less going on, and it's... Uh, okay, so I can see the red arrows are right next to the term Die From. So this is saying this is your car, and you die from the standstill cars and the crossing the intersection. Fences is kind of floating around here. I would probably redesign this board so that we could have... Um, or with this one-page game design so that we could have... A uh, line going to fences as well. So we have three arrows, three ways to die. Um, and then we have your car here, which is, comes up twice. I think um, that's a mistake because we seem to be repeat encoding the information. Um, and then your car has a mechanical issue that forces you to drift. See how well you could steer. Okay, so I can actually get the idea of what's going on here. Your car, your steering, and you got to avo avoid some things. It makes sense. I think there are better ways to telegraph that, probably from a top-down view. Um, that would look a lot better. But this one-page game design achieves everything it's set out to. Glow cube. Okay, so this is the goal. You're the cube, and you want to dodge these uh, spikes. You have movement, which I, I believe is the DWASD. Okay, so we have sort of like a column layout here, where it's saying this is the goal, this is the movement, this is the failure. Um, I think we should just discretize these columns by having like a line up and down because it's a little hard to connect the movement to these arrows which are kind of floating around down here. Um, fall off the edge is failure and hitting a cone is failure. Okay, very simple, very easy to understand. You avoid these guys and you don't fall off the edge. Simple enough. Um, I think this mood board gets it all done um, and it's efficient. The arrow is actually pointing directly to the cube, uh, is, excuse me, the arrow from the cube is pointing directly to the block or the uh, the spike. So dodge, I think, should sort of like point around, like it should say you should go around the spike because people are going to read this as cube goes towards and it's going directly towards the spike. So I, I think there's, that could be done a little bit better. Um, yeah, and I would just probably split it up so that you'd have a, a column for each one. Rain or shine, not quite a flight simulator. Okay, so what's going on here? So we've got a airplane, WASD movement, 
A 3D grid, more reaction than movement control. Avoid the clouds and collect sunshine. Okay, um, when we talk about efficient, this is certainly an efficient one-page game design. Um, it's so simple and it conveys everything I think you'd need to know. Um, you're a plane, you avoid the clouds, and you collect the sun. Simple enough, and I think it also looks uh, really, um, really beautiful in, in its stylization. Okay, so this um, one-page game design, I can immediately tell, is probably a little bit too much text. Um, we don't want to have the page too text heavy. Uh, we want to have, you know, the, the visual, the reason why it's a visual um, aid is so that we can kind of, you, you know, represent everything visually if we can with, with arrows and stuff. Uh, so what's going on here? Odyssey. All right, so the player is a spaceship. You've got the horizontal movement. Obstacles come towards the player. The illusion of forward movement. Here the whooshes of near miss, miss asteroids. Uh, point light illuminates nearby objects. Can slow time, slow mo for one second at a time. Okay, so there's that's TMI. All right, there's way too much information going on here. Um, where this mood board? Excuse me. Where this? I keep splitting it up. Excuse me. It, where this one-page game design had this one little icon here, WASD movement, told me that you move with WASD. Uh, this one-page game design, it just takes an entire paragraph to tell me that. And um, this is not an efficient one-page game design. It needs to be much, uh, much less text. And I think all it needed to say really was, I mean, just throwing an icon like this, WASD movement, done. Um, and I don't think we needed to know about the whooshes of the near miss asteroids. I think it's just it's too much information. Um, the one page game design, you have to be efficient with, you know, trying to not have a lot of data on the page, but still get across a lot of information. But at the same time, you have to choose what information do you want to include. And um, it kind of goes both ways. You want to, you know, say not a lot, say a lot with little, but you also don't want to say that much. You don't want to say a lot. <laughs> so you got to find a balance there. And the Sound effect descriptions, it's just too much. Um, boundary laser walls. Replaces falling off to limit horizontal movement. Constantly scrolls past, past player. Touch equals explode. Yeah, it's just too much information, right? They said the same thing three times. Just say the walls are the boundaries. Frankly, um, I can kind of tell that. Um, but, you know, th there's definitely there's faster ways to say these things. Okay, so in, uh, I think, Pursuit of Efficiency, this student has no text at all. Oh, or, well, they do have end, E-N-D, which I already knew because I could see this line is going in that direction. Um, but this one-page game design completely fails because I have no idea what the heck's going on here. You've got a ball or some sort of circle, A-D. Okay, so the A and D, I could tell are WASD movement, right? That's, right, that's... Oh, no, because A is left and D is right on my keyboard. So I don't know what's going on here. Unless maybe I'm looking at it from the side and W is forward. It's just too confusing. Um, I think if you're going to talk about WASD, you got to talk about all four. If that's what this even is. Maybe the A and D stand for something else. Um, and there's these little heart icons on top of the circles. But I don't know what those mean. Um, and this line is going through some rectangles but around other rectangles it's going around the blue but through the yellow I just have no sense for what this game is by reading this one page game design and the key goal is for basically someone new if they were going to join your project and start working on it as well they need to understand it as fast as possible and this one page game design just doesn't do that even though it is efficient it's it's too efficient in a sense right it's like I don't know what's going on okay this one-page game design is better than the one before. Um, I think it suffers from a, a lack of visual fidelity. Um, this one-page game design is clearly hand-drawn, um, and I think that it would look a lot better if they just put in the time to, you know, convert this into like PowerPoint text or something. Um, and and I think that's a big part of it. It really does suffer from not looking visually appeal. It doesn't look visually appealing. Um, so what's going on here? The player goes up through this roadway, presumably. Uh, there's a flickering street lamp and there's a battery. Okay, so you've identified that there's a battery and a lamp, but I don't really know what the purpose is. I could see here that there's a power meter with also a battery symbol, so I could probably guess that battery is some sort of energy and you collect it in order to refill your power meter, um, but I kind of had to jump to get there and I don't think everybody would have understood that. Also, flickering street lamp, 
what's the purpose? What does it do? Um, you know, why are you calling it out to me? Am I supposed to avoid them? Am I supposed to try and hit all of them? Uh, those kind of player goals aren't being translated well. All right, what's next here? Halloween Hustle. Okay, so we've got the player in the top left, right? The jack-o'-lantern. They can jump, move side to side. Okay. Um, tombstone that can be jumped over dodged. Fence encloses the player area. Added environment details the player can interact with but add to immersion. Chop that bubble out. No need to tell me about it. Uh, it's not relevant. It's not relevant to the design. Um, obstacle. Imp must be dodged. Can't jump over this guy. Skeleton that must be dodged. Can't jump over this guy. Okay, so, okay, and these have to be jumped over. Okay, so there's, there's clearly a more efficient way to show this. Maybe if we just had the, the tombstone, the imp, and the skeleton, we could show that you're jumping over the tombstone with some sort of visual, maybe an arrow that jumps over it, and then you have to go around the imps or the skeletons. Um, with that being said, this one-page game design is not bad, right? It's certainly a silver candidate. It tells you all the information you need to, but it kind of repeats some information. Um, and it, it's really not, uh, I, I could say it could be a lot more efficient. Um, but I get the picture, right? You jump over the tombstones and you go around the, the scary looking dudes. Makes sense. Um, moving on. Uh, okay, Bella. So this is a game where we've got the controls, WASD or arrow keys, jump is space, shield is F or J, and pause is P. Okay, simple enough. Very, very clear, right? What, what's going on there? Um, and you've got the umbrella to float, hold space to recharge. The umbrella is the shield. Okay, I was curious what the shield was, but it's clear that the umbrella is like a shield. And I don't know how I would. Okay, so you hold the shield, and then you push the direction to shield in that direction. But why are there two buttons for the shield? I don't understand that. Um, ball bounce, jump plus shield plus down on beach ball. Okay, so I don't know if you really need to go into the controls of how to play the game. Um, like, just to say the player can do this might be efficient. Um, but I think this team actually uses one-page game design because it, it's so good. They use it all the way to their final project and just actually gave this to the person they were demoing to in the final showcase. So I, I see how that works for that reason. Um, but I, I'm just a little bit confused. Enemies. Okay, so we got the enemies here. So you want to avoid those guys. Checkpoint, you can make it active. Uh, probably TMI, I don't think you need to know that. Updraft, hold space to fly, unlimited meter, okay. And you want to save the beach ball. Investigate the beach ball factory malfunction. Better bounce beach ball this way. Okay, so this is clearly, oh, save the beach, right? So this is the narrative hook, which I think is great to have in your game, but it doesn't need to be in the one-page game design. This is really focused on the gameplay mechanics, uh, so really everything else. So I would chop out the save the beach. I would chop out the checkpoints. Uh, players don't need to know that. They'll discover that on their own. Um, and just focus on you know what really matters to the player, which is going to be avoiding the enemies and shielding away these incoming beach balls with your umbrella. Okay, a Hanu world. So we've got this boat is continually jumping, dumping trash into the ocean. Okay, so here it goes. And my eye is kind of guided along the bottom here. I, I think uh, there's not a lot going on here, and I appreciate that. This turtle wants all the trash out of the ocean. Okay. So it's affecting the trash somehow. And this fishing boat has a fishing net. Use it to get all the trash out of the ocean. Okay, so I think I get the idea that you're playing as the boat and the turtle, and you need to... You need to either get the trash out of the ocean, or you're playing as this boat trying to get the trash into the ocean. So I think it would be uh, it could be a little more clean, clear which one is the player of these three different sort of people working in this world, um, and sort of I, I understand what all the goals are, right? This guy needs to make trash. These guys need to remove trash. Um, but but what what's the player goal? What do they want to do? Um, and yeah, I think that'd be great. Okay, what's going on here? Uh, avalanche. So you want to avoid the avalanche by maintaining speed, ski down the mountain as fast as possible, and deploy the parachute to get across large gaps. Wow. I think probably that's enough, right? It's really efficient and it gets all of that done. Uh, this doesn't look like a gap though. I kind of see it. It's a little hard to tell where the foreground and the background are in this picture. Um, 
but uh, but it gets across the point, right? I get it. It's um, you know, you're going down the hill and you jump over the gaps. Help the Yeti get safely down the mountain while avoiding the avalanche. Okay, so this is kind of just repeat information. We could chop out this uh, bullet point. Navigate your way through the hills while enjoying the beautiful backdrops. Again, TMI, don't need it, chop it out. Avoid obstacles while skiing and parachuting down. Okay, um, the obstacles are new because that wasn't information provided to us, right? We heard about the avalanche. We didn't hear about obstacles. I don't really know what those are, um, but it would be better to just have another thing here with a little call out, like you have these speech bubbles and be it be an obstacle, right? Uh, rather than having this text down here. I, I feel like there's sort of like two versions of the information and a lot of it's being repeated. And there's a top score system. So maybe just include the scoreboard in your image. Um, I don't think we need that as text. If it can be shown as an image, then show it as an image. Um, that's usually better than text. Uh, what a great example to come up now, because uh, I could tell there's just too much going on. Uh, there's way too much text on the screen. Um, so what's what's going on here? So we've got a we've got a number which is on the screen, and then the text corresponds to that number explaining what's going on here. So you want to hop on platforms, blow bubbles to overcome major gaps. Bubble counter is number. Wow, there's it's a little bit of uh, overload here. I'm a little overwhelmed and, and and I feel nauseous. There's just too much text on the screen. Um, okay, so I, I get the picture. You you want to jump on top of these platforms and the bubble counter is here to refill the bubbles okay and these are di three different kinds of bubbles okay friends or foes you want to avoid these guys or they're your friends okay the dragonfly is your friend but the fl but the mosquito is your foe okay these are the different platforms you could jump on Okay, so you could jump on an apple, is that right? Oh, excuse me. Um, ideal gameplay. Create bubbles to jump across major gaps in the map. Manage bubble counter to not... Okay, great. This is your log line, right? Just put this at the front because th this makes everything make a lot more sense, right? Create bubbles, jump across, right? This is what you need to do, blah, blah, blah. Just put this in the top. If you can't convey it through images, which I don't think is true, I think you do a great job right here of showing this as an image, um, then just have the text in the front so that everything else will make sense later. Uh, storytelling. Chop that out. Okay, the story is not part of the one-page game design. Um, that that could be something else. Uh, the one-page game design is just the mechanics. Okay, next. Shepherds. Um, two-player co-op. Okay, so these are the two players. Got it. And the players have different strengths, which are defined here. Wonderful. This is the environment. Okay. Uh, it's a little bit of a mood board, right? That's what the mood board's for. Um, I don't know if this is relevant. You might want to chop that out. And then gameplay. Okay, gameplay is really efficient, right? But too efficient. I don't know what the hell's going on in this image. Um, I see there's there's two. Um, I see there are there. Here are the two players, right? And then here's one of the wolves, which I can see is an enemy. And then here are the sheep, which are defenseless sheep that require protection from the dogs. Okay, so you got to protect the sheep. Uh, but what's going on here? Is the wolf attacking the the dog, or the dog is attacking the wolves? It's a little hard to tell which one's a wolf and which one's a dog. I'm not I'm not too sure. Um, but what's going on in this picture? I, I don't understand. Um, we need clear player goals. Um, get the sheep from here to here. Um, these are the controls, maybe to do it. You know, guide the sheep, squish them between the two wolves, something like that. Um, but just be careful, you know, if you remove text, maybe you're removing too much. Um, I, I can't tell what's going on here. All right, and that's it. That completes our review of all these um, one-page game designs. Uh, clearly, a lot of them were really great. Um, some of them, you know, I had some, some small suggestions, uh, but for the most part, the students are on the ball. Um, you just want to focus on having the high fidelity, uh, having efficiency, so the information that you choose to show, make sure you're showing it in as concise a way as possible. Not a lot of text. Don't have too much text. And then the last thing is the information that you're showing, make sure you're showing the right information. Don't show everything. Don't show the story. Don't show, you know, all the environment art. Just focus on what's the most essential, smallest, you know, small game mechanic, smallest focus, focal point of your game. Um, and that's what you choose to include within the one-page game design. Thank you. Um, and good luck on your 
projects.